the hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Johnny, and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And we are going to build an aircraft next. <laughs> it's been a while since we actually built a, uh, well, we built uh, the Huey last. And before that, I think it was a P-51D. And that's the only two aircraft that we've built on the channel, so we need to build another one. And this is the one that I've picked out to build. I think it's a very interesting one. I think you'll like it. And it's this one right here. So that's the Henkel HE162A2 Salamander by Tamiya in 148 scale. So let's just go ahead and jump down to the bench here and take a look at the box and what's inside it. All right, quick look at the box here. As you can see, we have some nice box art. It uh, shows us two aircraft in flight. And you can build this kit, I believe, in either mode. We'll find out when we get to the instructions. And on the edge of the box here, uh, you can see that we do have some paint callouts here. Uh, light green, dark green, light blue. It gives us the AS numbers. I'm not sure uh, what those ASs are. Probably Tamiya colors. We'll find out when we get into the instructions. And it shows you on the box where the painting is done. And so on the end of the box here, we see that it is item number 61097, and on the other edge of the box, uh, we see different markings, and uh, it can be displayed with the engine mounted and uh, in the open uh, condition for maintenance. And also, I believe, we have a stand uh, with an auxiliary engine. So, or maybe it's the same engine <laughs> We'll have to open up this box and find out. So there we are. That's the box in a nutshell. Now, I'm not much of an art critic, so I, I won't criticize the art. But it looks, it looks nice. It's nice and crisp. So, And as you would expect, this is to me is pretty much standard type um, packaging. We'll just go ahead and go through this real quick because we're going to get into all these bags here. So this, this looks like uh, there's some engine parts and cowlings and covers and landing gear. Well, the wheels anyway. So there's two sprues of that. We'll get into that later. And here is the airframe. And we also have wing segments here. It looks like our main wings tail section, all that, clear parts are in a separate bag, inside the bag, that's good, keeps them from getting scratched up, and we also have this other sprue, uh, which you can see we got a pilot, here is the full engine detail, and it looks like the uh, engine stand, all those little parts there, so we'll get into that, and we have our decals, or decals if you prefer, Along with, to me, is tech tips. Now, if you're new to modeling, it's a good idea to take and read these. Uh, it talks about the tools that you uh, would be helpful <laughs> uh, for uh, assembling models. And different uh, things here for drilling and techniques for gluing. So, yeah. that, And also talk about painting. So that's pretty standard with every Tamiya kit. And then we have our instructions, which also has a uh, history on it. Such as uh, probably the number of aircraft that were built and the number that were in service, things like that. And then we have here uh, our painting schematic. It's a separate piece. Has our paint color callouts. And on the back side here also. So look at that more in depth. And then of course we have the instructions in uh, Japanese it looks like. So, no, wait a minute. This is not, this is information in Japanese, uh, it's more history. 
What do you know about that? It's the first time I've seen this. Now, this kit came out, I think, 2006. So, that would be something new because usually I build uh, old kits. So, let's break this all down. All right, so we'll take a look at sprue A. We'll start with the sprues. And let's see, these panel lines are recessed. Hope you can see it there if the light's good enough. So it has recessed panel lines, and you can see here there's also rivet detail. And we got detail here on the tail section as well. And here's the wings. We have what looks to be the fill, fuel fill, maybe. One on each wing. And this, this is the top side of the wings. That's the top side right there. And then the bottom side of the wings here, flaps. And also we have our cockpit detail here. There's a little bit of rivet detail in there. And we have rivet detail and structural items here. This must be the, uh, maybe the rear of the cockpit. I, I don't really know. <laughs> so we'll find out later. Uh, appears to be an air tank attached to that. Uh, this would be the front um, landing gear. Two pieces there. And this is a center console, I believe. I believe it sits right between the pilot's legs, maybe. And there's our front wheel. There is some tread detail and some real fine uh, bolt detail inside of that. Can you uh, see if you can see that? Yeah. Now in the cockpit area here, we have some structural elements there. On the other side, same. We've got some controls that are molded in. Very nice. And you can also see that rivet detail is carried onto the inboard side of these vertical stabilizers here. This is the bottom side of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. It's kind of a V configuration for the tail. All right, so that is sprue A. Nice, nice look there because you can actually see that there's also uh, rivet detail on the fuselage as well. That should paint up and weather very nicely. All right, so that is sprue A. And now we have sprue B. We'll start off with the pilot. Now I will say for a 148th scale pilot, he is, he's got a lot of detail on him, as you can see there. He has his oxygen mask and his goggles already in place. And he's probably wearing gloves. So if you're worried about uh, having to paint skin, uh, I don't think you have to worry about it on, on this figure. And here it looks like rudder control. There's our pilot seat. And this is uh, structural details here for the engine, I'm sure. And then this, I mean, we've got a lot, of, a lot of little parts here. I don't know what they all are, but we will find that all out. Uh, this is really nice right here. Uh, this is probably the thr throttle controls, maybe, or flaps, one or the other but we have nicely molded knobs in on that. Very nice. And then moving over, let's see, B, this is C sprue, which is part, all part together there. Uh, we have what appears to be some structural elements and parts for the engine. And there's some really fine detail there. Probably fuel pumps and things of that nature. Here's our engine, and we have some bolt and rivet detail there, and other nameless parts. I don't, I don't know what they are, <laughs> so, uh, but they're finely detailed. Here's part of the structure there for the um, for the engine stand. I recognize that, and more engine stand there. 
the bottom cage. We also have the little casters or wheels that will go on to that. And flip it over. Let's see what's on the back side. That's the back of our seat. Not much detail there. We do have some fine, it looks like spring detail on this right here, which may be our, our main landing gear or a portion of it. I don't know, but we'll find out. Very nice, very nice. So that's Spruce oh, B and C. So on to the next one. So now this is Sprue D, and we have two of those. And so here we have uh, the engine covers and what appears to be the intake cowling right there and probably the exhaust nozzles or the exhaust something covers of some kind. And this would be part of the engine detail along with our uh, intake turbines. Probably a center section there to space those out. And we also have our landing or our, our, our landing gear, I'm assuming. Items four and five there. And then our uh, the large tires. We have two of those. It's a tricycle type. So one small wheel in the front and two in the center of the aircraft or so. So I believe this here is the uh, other side of that wheel. Yeah. So that would be the outside and then the axle shaft would go in there. Yeah. So we have two of these. I don't know why we have two, but we'll find out. We'll set them aside. Now on to our clear parts. And as you can see there, I don't see a whole lot of distortion. Now we do have part of the fuselage, you can see right there, hopefully if I get in focus, that is molded in. So we have to pay attention to the fit there. And it is kind of a wide canopy which means that a lot of this uh, cockpit area inside will probably be visible. And then there's probably a gunner sight there. Really small clear parts. <laughs> something, something for me to lose. So it would be nice if we can uh, build this model and have uh, the canopy in either the raised or lowered position. Uh, if we don't have to glue it down, that would be a, a good plus there for display, <laughs> display purposes. <laughs> now we also have this little bag here, and I hope you can see these. These are little poly caps. There are eight of them there. And we have two metal pins. I have to figure out what those go to. I'm pretty sure they don't go to the landing gear. But we're not going to open this because I don't want to lose those before we actually get building. And Tamiya also included a little bag here with a nice ball bearing. I would say that this is the nose weight since it is a tricycle type landing gear. Uh, this will keep the nose down uh, if we are displaying it with the uh, landing gears uh, in the down position landing position and we got it sitting on a desk or something or on our favorite model shelf <laughs> it won't be tail heavy so that's nice that they put that in there all right so we previously briefly looked at this uh, to me at tech tips here uh, for assembly and it talks about uh, cutting off of parts removing excess plastic uh, using different types of cements, and these are all good tips. Uh, we also have our recommended basic tools list here from Tamiya, so you can't go wrong there. 
And on the opposite side, it continues on with test fitting. And I am a fan of test fitting. <laughs> if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that. I uh, love to test fit. Also, removing metal plating. We're not going to have to worry about that in this particular kit, but if you do build cars, if you want the glue to stick, uh, they recommend that you remove that uh, chrome uh, plating. And then it talks about painting and using spray paints. And if you've never done it before, this is a good place to start until you figure out your own techniques and methods. So that's that one, Tech Tips. So next is going to be the instructions. I think I need to adjust just a little bit here. There we go. Ah, uh, so we have the aircraft and the engine mounted on a stand. And I, hopefully we'll be able to display it either way with the engine mounted and maybe the uh, engine covers open or just like it's, it's sitting here. That would be nice. And we have um history just looking real quick i don't really see it but uh flight endurance over 30 minutes so uh, whatever we'll have to read that or you can read it on your own i mean you can <laughs> if you want to take a screenshot of that or <laughs> pause it you could you can read it if you like so we'll open up our instructions and of course they always tell you read uh, before assembly we have our cautions we have the paints required and these are the AS paints as well as the uh, X and XF paints that are going to be called out in these instructions for painting the parts on the model some more recommendations for tools and then we begin with step one which is the assembly of the engine stand. Huh. I would have thought that would be towards the end. That's what you get for thinking, Hillbilly. So let's see here. Moving on to step two. We're going to do cockpit assembly there. Yep, center console. Uh, we have, looks like seat belts. We'll have to check that out. They're probably decals. But you can have it for the figure, I think, or not. So, instrument cluster. Oh, very detailed. Step three, we've got our nose gear, and then we've got our main gear left and right. And as you can see, there's quite a few little pieces here. More, more sophisticated than you usually see in a lot of Tamiya kits. And then the mounting. Uh, I call that the uh, cockpit floor. That is not the cockpit floor, is it? <laughs> uh, that's for our landing gears. And, but I was right about that part. That's uh, for the landing gears. Very nice. That's step four. Step five. So we do have our color callouts here for the interior of the cockpit. Cockpit assembly. And where the nose gear goes. Assembly of our halves in step six. And there are the pins, the metal pins. So apparently they go on this support structure that the engine will go on to. Very nice. And we also have our tail fin assembly here. And it talks about cutting of E6, which is our landing gear bay doors. So apparently we have to cut those open. Let's take a look real quick. Oh, yeah. So here, uh, it's a good thing they gave us two. One for the open and closed position, and it would appear that if we want them open, we have to actually separate the doors from that center structure. 
Well, that ought to be interesting. But it looks pretty thin, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. If we mess it up, uh, we have a second one there, so that's good. <laughs> okay, so that's seven. Then step eight, assembly of our wings. So left and right, and then we have the assembly of the wings and tail section onto the airframe. And it looks like we put our instrument cluster in after uh, the hull has been assembled. Hull. I'm still thinking tanks. Fuselage. And then we have our landing gear bay doors and the center section, which that will have to be cut. So, hmm. Step 11 is the assembly of the engine. So what we're looking at is this is apparently is with these engine covers closed. And of course we have our paint callouts there. And then this is the engine assembly here in 12. A lot of detailed parts there. Very nice. And this is for display on the engine stand. I hope I'm staying in frame with all this because I'm excited. Probably should just took pictures of it and did a voiceover, don't you think? <laughs> Here's step 13. Here we are assembling uh, the windscreen. And then there's the canopy, open or closed position for the canopy, paint callouts for our pilot. So it looks like this engine assembly sets onto those two steel pins, and that's step 13. But down here in 14, apparently it kind of looks like we can also configure it with the engine covers open and with the engine displayed uh, from the stand onto the aircraft. So that would be nice. A lot of versatility there. So now we have different units. Uh, May 1945, Lech, Germany. This is three, JG1. And these are the decals that are on it. And the color call, color callouts. <laughs> and here we have the one JG one uh, May forty five, and the callouts for it as well as the markings. And this one has interesting art. So that's a possibility. This one, possibility. So that's two JG1. And then last but not least, two JG1, Lieutenant Gerhard Humph. And this one's painted up very peculiar. We have different, uh, different colors. Yes, this wing is and this tail section has different coloring there. Very interesting. Okay, so that's the instructions. Now we do have this additional one. It looks like we have different pilots. So uh, this one's for Aircraft 23. And we have our AS colors called out there. This is the side view, of course. And we'll flip it over. And that is the top and bottom. And yes, it does look to be different colors on the wings. This one has stripes in. This is unique too. 
I'm going to have to do some studying and figure out which one I really want to build. Very nice. So we have many options there. And of course we have this right here that I was confused over. And apparently it is the history of the development of the German jet. Uh, talking about two world records, June 20th, 1939. Uh, rival jet development. Development of the 162, airframe structure, a lot of information there. Uh, the Hankel Company ejector seat, as well as combat history and characteristic and assessment. I'm sure that was by the Allies assessment, probably. Yeah. Talk about British pilots testing the aircraft. And then, of course, we have our specifications here. Length, engine, crew, empty weight, so on and so forth. So, a lot of information there. And it's also in Japanese, so. Nice little addition there for the kit. And then we have, of course, our decal markings. Get a nice good close-up here. It's about a medium thickness, I guess, on the decals. Kind of reminds me of the last kit that we just did, the T3485 in thickness. They're not super thin, so hopefully I won't have any problems with <laughs> them folding over on me. But they don't appear to be so terribly thick that they'll be an issue. So, you know, these are nice decals. Yeah, here we go. There's seatbelt decals. Very interesting. Not seen that before. And we have all of our little shield emblems there. Instrument cluster decal. And Tamiya has a plethora of these little tags here that will go all over the aircraft, denoting things like uh, hook here, don't step there, <laughs> all that. So, yeah, very nice. Very nice to me. I like those. Now, these are unique. They're actually in the kit. So, a lot of times they are not. All right. All right, so that's everything that's in our kit. And it looks like a really good kit. Um, I think we're going to enjoy building this one. Shouldn't take us too long to do, I hope. And so that's it. The uh, Henkel uh, HE162A2 Salamander. So that's our next project, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, if you've built this kit, uh, if you've had any issues with it, <laughs> give me a heads up, too. That would be important. <laughs> uh, but like always, we're going to do it the hillbilly way. So there are some things that uh, when we do our building with the instructions, that may be necessary for us to kind of skip around a little bit. And as we paint and build things, that's kind of the way it works out. Uh, engineers that draw up these instructions don't always think about that stuff. So they leave it to us to do. So special thanks to all my viewers. It's because of you guys I keep making these videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you got a good enough look at it with my shaky hands. <laughs> uh, and also, if you are new to the channel, I uh, hope today I uh, earned your subscription if you're not a subscriber. Uh, and leave me a comment and leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. So I'm going to get building on this and we will see you guys in the next one.